Underdog Mafia. Hello? The number you have dialed. As striking writers and studios will meet this week to discuss restarting negotiations. Union leaders told striking Hollywood writers that they plan to meet with representatives for studios to discuss. In movies has literally changed the way we consume content and is fueling the current Hollywood strikes. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, George Clooney, Meryl Streep, Leonardo DiCaprio, just a few of the celebrities who have donated seven figures to provide aid to fellow SAG. Has been on strike for around 14 weeks. The union says that the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, the group that negotiates on behalf of major entertainment companies, has requested to meet with them on August 4th. The WGA Negotiating Committee said in a statement to members on Tuesday, the AMPTP through Carol Lombardini reached out to the WGA today and requested a meeting this Friday to discuss negotiations. The statement continued, we'll be back in communication with you sometime after the meeting with further information. As we've said before, be wary of rumors. Whenever there is important news to share, An AMPTP spokesperson said in a statement, quote, we remain committed to finding a path to mutually beneficial deals with both unions. This was referring to both the WGA and performers union SAG-AFTRA, which has also gone on strike. If the two sides met, it would be the first step in what may be a long process to bring the two sides together. The WGA has been on strike since contract talks broke down in May over a multitude of issues. Since the writers' talks broke off, SAG-AFTRA called its... Okay, yeah, you know, I, I get that. But like, how much, how much longer do you think? See, look, I'm telling you, I've been looking at stuff all day. Actors Access, LA Casting. I, mean, I even looked at Backstage. Okay, so I know, I, I get that, but like, how much, how much longer? Okay, okay, so there's, there's nothing to pay for. But anyway, like, I'm looking at everything and there's literally nothing on here. Push a lot of young up and coming actors out of the industry and for writing the same thing. If 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 it's an industry that nobody can afford to be in anymore, the uh, the art of writing is going to be a it's going to be gone. And basically, the only few people that can work in the industry are writers who can afford to do it for no money, i.e. tech bros and trust fund babies. So original voices will be driven out of the industry. Original looking actors will be driven out of the industry if they can just make a perfect robot example of what a human being can be. And so that's what we're fighting against. Right, we're I mean, fighting you, against original... Yeah. We want original content, original voices, original yeah. people. Understood. Otherwise, we're just going to get sure. I, the I mean, same you, stuff you, over and you, over you again. Say, you say you're not averse to technology. I mean, can I very, very last?
Junior. <laughs> Uh, check this out. This goes your eyes underscore TV where you still the star. I'm over here trying to get some shaved ice. Um, it's in, I, I told them who I was, but they told me we don't give a hell who you is. Get your ass at the back of the line. So that's what I did. And then this lady, I want you to get her picture. This lady took my spot and told me I better not say nothing and she going to take my spot in the line. I can take your spot? And look, he going to come buff on me. And then he take it, hell yeah, you can have my spot. <laughs> Those guys underscore TV, where you still a star. I'm tired, man. I'm tired, tired. bro. Yo, I heard somebody tired. said, I heard somebody said, um, cut ice. I, yeah, let's go get ice. ice man. Yeah, we can my bad. End, bro. We yeah, shake ice. Walking, bro. Well, we've we'll been here for a minute now, man. We've we'll been here for a minute. It's yeah, our voice gonna be heard. Yeah, well, let's take a break. Shoes, man. Let's I told you not to come man. out here stunting, man. I don't know what's wrong with you. Damn. Look at you. Yeah, Tired. Yeah. Revolution not even over. Yo, this shit ain't easy, man. It's not supposed it's to be easy. Pick that sun up. Use some big ass arms. Get the fire. It's our voice gonna be heard, though. Second water. If you keep yelling, it will be. That shave ice. Get your water. Water. But we are with the shape. I'm gonna get The truck is shake ice, so.
match made in heaven, not a match made in Western men. Drake does it every fucking time. It's not cardio. I can read you like I wrote you. Ugh. I feel that, Drake. I really, I really feel it. I gotta write that one down, too. If y'all hear these, The strike got me fucked up, man. This strike is just like, for some reason, I don't know. Um, I heard that in the past years now, this is like the first time Hollywood shut down. Can you imagine? And this whole shit gotta happen the moment I get here. Like, literally. I came to LA just like everybody else, you know? The LA dream. Like, I got a TV show going on right now, you know? I'm trying to you know, take myself to the next level. I get here and the whole fucking Hollywood shut down. Like, I just feel like this is, this is God trying to tell me something, to be honest. Like, this has never happened before. Literally, it has never happened in the history of entertainment. Like, you know, it has happened to the point where, like, okay, maybe the, the writers go on strike, maybe the actors might go on strike, you know, but not simultaneously, everybody going on strike. It's just ridiculous, man. Like, I'm just like, my faith is being tested right now. Literally, it's being tested right now. Like, I've met with a lot of actors, you know, trying to see, like, how they, like, booking. Like, my manager, like, he got me to come out here. And all this is going on. He cannot even get me work, man. He cannot get me work. Like, I'll wake up, go to the gym, eat, and just go on my laptop trying to find a commercial, find a, a gig or something, you know? But it's just, it just sucks right now, man. It really sucks. This whole strike, man, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, how long is this strike going to go on to? How long is it going to go on for? I'm just... <sighs> Yo, come on, bro. Like, come on. Yes. I'm free. Yes. Get me some work. That's all I ask. That's all I ask, man. Yes, I get the strike is going on, and it's not just me going through this shit, but yes. But I still got to pay my bills. I still got to pay my bills, man. Ugh. Oh. Come on, you should have just left me in New York. I was in New York minding my business. I didn't have to come to LA. I'm out here now, somebody gotta pay these bills. Just get me some work, that's all I ask. Yes, I'm free, I got time. I got time for days, I got time. I just woke up and look at this, I'm on my, I'm on my laptop right now trying to look for some work. What are you doing? What are you doing for me right now? You're not doing nothing, I have to call you for us to talk. Like, come on, get me some work, man. <sighs> Yes. I'm free this week. Next week too, I'm free. I'm free until you get me some work. Literally. It sucks. Especially when you're just new to the city, man. Like, why? Like, why gotta happen when I just got here? Like, why gotta happen? Like, why me? My fate is being tested right now, but one thing about me, I always find a way. I always find a way. I'm not giving up, man. This this track is like a challenge for me to test my fate, and I'm going to find a loopholes to it.
100%. I'm just going to keep reaching out to agents, to talent agencies, um, go out to events, because, you know, I ain't an ugly motherfucker. I'm going to find a way. You know, I just got to meet that person. I'm going to find a way somehow. I just got to be out there, man. I just got to put myself out there. And whatever is meant to happen for me will happen. I'm a, I'm a strong believer of that. So, yeah, that's just what I'm banking on right now. Just the gym is the right place. I've met, I've met some dope people. Um, when I first got here, like with the whole strike happening, it was hard to make like uh, genuine friends, you know, like, you know. I've met some people that just be lying to me, like, you know, giving me that L.A. treatment. Because, but then again, I found out that almost everybody in L.A. is like that. It's just be lying, man. Like, what you're lying for? Like, I met this guy the other day talking about, oh, he owns this, he owns that, he owns this. They cannot even get me in the club. Talking about, yeah, I can get you in the club. They get to the club, cannot even get me in. Begging the bouncers, oh, can you please get me in my boy? And like, come on now. Like, you don't got to lie to me. Talking about, oh, we got to pay cover charge. I'm not paying for shit, man. If you cannot get me in, I'm, I'm taking my ass. So I don't want like going to the club. I went there because he promised me he can get me in there. But that's the thing, man. I'm trying to meet genuine people, man. I'm trying to meet people that's not going to like pretend to be something they're not. Just be, just be your authentic self. That's how I am. So I want to meet people that are just like that. But, you know, I've been, I've been here for a month now. And uh, with the strike going on, I've been blessed to meet like certain people and you know we our friendship bond are like developing and um it's just up from there man it's just up from there so i'm just uh praying that as time progresses it gets better my situation gets better this whole strike becomes a uh, a blessing instead of a curse that's how i'm trying to see that so i'm not trying to make it you know bring me down it's just, just trying to like, you know, maybe there's something within me that I haven't unlocked yet. Maybe that's what this track is trying to like teach me. So, um, yeah, I'm working on it and um, meeting good people and uh, just putting myself out there, man. Putting myself out there, working out, looking good. Because, you know, in L.A., if you look good, opportunities is set to come by 100%. Hello, I'm Martel so, Taylor okay. from Detroit, Michigan, 40 years old. Uh, the strike affected me, it, you know, it's affecting my um, creative juices and stuff. So, I mean, I'm a, as an actor, you know, I've been in this business for about a year now. And um, the strike basically slowed everything down, you know. I felt like I was progressing into being a, you know, I mean, do a background. But, you know, I feel like I was going to eventually break through that wall that I've been trying to get through. So, I mean, this strike... Uh, I feel, I mean, I feel like it's necessary, but, you know, I also want to get back to work. You know, one day I do want to be in a union. I'm non-union, so that's, you know, I do want to be a union, get benefits, and be an uh, everyday working actor. Uh, for right now, I'm contemplating going back into my old field because there's no work. I mean, there's work, but it's not work enough to pay my bills, you know, you know. So I'm struggling with that right now, and I don't really want to go back into trucking. That's what I originally was doing before I got into really wanting to get into this acting stuff. So that's how it's affected me. You know, it, it you know it, it's kind of depressing, but you know I move out to LA, and then the strike happens, and now I'm about to go back to work in a in a field that I really don't want to do. That stresses me out and bringing me anxiety and bringing me. Um, you know, just bring my moral morale down, you know. So, trying to stay positive and hopefully I find something that will keep, keep a balance of where it keep me here in L.A. to be able to afford to pay my bills and also this strike in soon where I can uh, get back to doing what I love to do, which is being in front of a camera and uh, get, being creative and uh, getting better with the craft that I'm, I'm trying to pursue. So, yeah, that's basically how the strike affected me. Um, it's affecting my family because you know they always asking me about like the strike you know and stuff everybody back home like I, like, I don't know I mean I'm not I don't really know the details in the in the gyps of it they they just worry about their t favorite television shows and stuff so um yeah I'm trying to <laughs> try to give them the best answer possible 
that I know, you know, what the information I find out, you know, and I'm giving them the information. So I believe the strike will probably go until January of this year. It's August right now, so probably another four or five months. So I was thinking I might just go back to work hard, stack my bread up, then come back, go back to school, and then come back a better actor, you know, when everything's picking back up as far as union stuff. We still got our, uh, our crew out here in L.A. who's doing their stuff independently. You know, maybe that's the best way Hollywood should go, more independent work, you know, because you can't rely on these big studios because they, all they care about is their money and they don't care about the uh, little guys. And so, yeah, we, uh, we're gonna, we feel like we can take over a 2B streaming service or whatever, you know, so we can do some stuff like that. Maybe, maybe a pickup where it'll, the independent um, films can scare the big companies to make want to put more money into the more independent films or you know or the smaller companies want to put more money into the Tubi type films or whatever you know so maybe we can make money that way yeah you know like I say well Shauna remember this comes after talks that, fell apart last week so it's certainly a positive story and what's been a very long journey so far the writer strike surpassing that critical 100 day mark we'll see if these talks can lead to anything substantial now last week the wga said that the studios approached them with a template of a deal that was modeled off of the agreement that they struck with the directors guild of america now the wga was very offended by that considering all of these guilds have pretty different ones. A large sticking point there being streaming residuals, how these writers get paid for projects that continue to boom on streaming. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do, though? Like, fucking stuff. So let's talk more about the background acting. I know there's a strike going on. Being a background actor, how has that affected you? Pretty much we can't work right now. And they pretty much want to scan our images and use them forever. So I literally wouldn't work background again. I'd get paid for the day and that would be it. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel used. Like they'll be using my likeness forever. So knowing that there's a strike going on and it's been about 97 days, how do you feel that this will be resolved? I don't think it will be. Not anytime soon. I'm not sure how it'll get resolved. And if you could resolve it in any way, what would you what would your uh, decision be? My decision would be to pay people what they're worth and figure out how to cut corners somewhere else. Cut corners. Tell me more about cutting corners. <laughs> what do you mean? I just think if you do right by your people, it'll create a better environment and it'll create better art. So don't cut corners there. Find somewhere else. There are plenty of other places these corporations could be cutting back on and they're not. They're choosing to cut the lowest people on the totem pole. So since the strike, what have you been doing financially? I've just been a living off of savings. Do you feel that the writers are also, that are also living off their savings have enough money to last them until the strike will be resolved? No, but that's the point. If you're smart and you're rich, you're just going to wait them out because you know eventually they're going to have to cave. Uh, because the industry is changing and, uh, and inflation has gone up and our pay is not going up in line with the industry changes. Um, 
with network TV, you're able to get paid properly for your work and residuals, which are royalties. Uh, that has not happened since the streamers have come in because they've not basically been held to the same uh, account as the network TV. So basically, you can make a TV show. It can be watched by 50 million people around the globe. And these streamers can send you a check for 29 cents as a royalty because they there is no transparency. They don't have to tell you how many people are watching and how much money they're making from the show. So our money has gone down uh, exponentially over the years while the streamers and these executives at the top of these studios are making millions and mil billions of dollars. Uh, and this isn't, uh, of course, just about base pay and... So, Xavier, tell me, what brings you here today? Uh, I mean, we're here talking about this whole SAG strike thing, man. I ain't got nothing else better to do since I'm just at home. Not working. <sighs> Shit, man, this shit sucks, bro. It's like I'm so used to, like, being busy during the day. Like, even if I'm not on set, you know, like, I can go to the gym, work out, go home, work on a script, go to class, blah, blah, blah. Like, all that shit is basically zapped right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're just at home doing nothing. I mean, you can hop out and try to go to the strikes for a little bit, but I learned during the whole, like, you know, George Floyd thing that, like, that I'm just, I'm just not that into protesting outside for hours on end. So, you know, I do my best to, like, post information, check in with people, but at the end of the day, like, this shit is tiring and uh, it's getting a little scary. Prior to the strike, what were you working on? Oh, I mean, I was working on a couple things. I was, uh, I had a pretty big uh, role on a show earlier this year, so I was really proud of that. Um, I had been even standing in on another really big show before that the whole season. I was working with some really great actors, and that was some, uh, really important to me, you know, getting a chance to work with them and just, and just watch them, you know, just getting the opportunity to just be in the room. Um, so it kind of sucks to have had this really nice momentum and now I can't even I can't even promote that show <laughs> that I that I got a chance to do earlier this year. That's what really sucks. Thankfully, it came out. You know, everybody saw it before the strike happened, but like to not even be able to like post about it again or even talk to about it, about, talk talk about it to someone else is like it's like, like almost didn't even happen. Yeah. So moving forward, how do you feel about the strike? What are the resolutions you feel that can be done? And how has the strike affected you on your day-to-day -day life? I mean, it's just, it's a amount of time thing. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, fuck the strike. Like, it doesn't need to happen. No, it definitely needs to happen. Like, AI taking my job, like, that doesn't even make sense. I know so many people who started off in background and then became big stars. So for them to be like, oh, we're just going to scan you for a day and then, and then that's it. Like, no, that's, you, you can't do a show without them. Right. The whole residuals thing, like, you literally can't be an actor without residuals. Like, there's no way you're going to be working on a show every day of the year. So how else are we supposed to feed our families without it? So it's like, the strike needs to happen. But now, personally, I'm at that point where it's like, all right, it's a little, it's a little scary. You know, I do pretty well, you know, keeping my money together financially. But I'm at that point where I'm like, okay, like, how are we, how are we actually going to make rent next year without me... Being like, well, let me go to food service or let me do something else that's not going to make me happy. I've been really fortunate to avoid, you know, those jobs that have nothing to do with my career, what I actually want to do in life. But now I'm at that point, like I might actually have to, I might actually have to, you know, do some other stuff. What resolutions do you see for the future? I mean, I'm holding on to hope. I'm holding on to hope that something will happen. Uh, you know, get those those things about the AI, about the residuals, about protecting actors in general. Like, those are three things that we just cannot move on. So there is no, like, oh, well, maybe we can budge a little bit on this and then this is going to all be over. Like, no. Like, either we're going to get all three of those things or we're getting nothing. So in terms of resolution, it's really just... I just we, we just we just have to get what we want. We're at that point. We cannot sacrifice our pension. We cannot sacrifice our time. We cannot sacrifice our art. Things that people have been working for for so freaking long. 
just so that some executive at Netflix or whatever it is can, you know, buy a boat next summer. The resolution is that we get what we deserve, and hopefully the studios, you know, own up to that. Did you vote? What do you mean, did I vote? Did you vote for the strike? Yeah, I did. Even though I knew, like, <laughs> if we go for it, it's going to be a tough time. But at the end of the day, it was my career and my art form versus not being able to do what I love. And, you know, that's all. That's all I got to say about that, man. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Get this. All right. And action. Okay, all right, cool. Hi, my name is Elijah McCain, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm 25 years old. since you came into my life it just seemed like when my life was spiraling out of control you were the only one there for me you meant so much to me my family stopped attacking me my friends started coming back but I can't help to think that somewhere out there in this world there's somebody else What was that? Um, it's out of here, man. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I think uh, I think I think we're getting closer. I think you we're think getting, you're getting closer. Yeah, I think we're getting closer. You want me to go deeper or lighter? No, definitely not deeper. Definitely, definitely not deeper. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, lighter. Yeah. Let's, let's okay. Keep it light. You know, it's, it's supposed okay. to be a, it's supposed okay. to be a McDonald's commercial. So it's I, I be... don't even know why you're doing a monologue right now. Okay, it's supposed to be a McDonald's yeah, commercial. Yeah, yeah. It's not even. You, I, <sighs> McDonald's two lines and you okay. to... I should probably improv a little bit then. No, well you just you just did it. I, I don't know where that where that thing came from. Okay, so okay. Just, just two lines. Just literally just. Why does it? Why does the cameras make you nervous, bro, bro? You know what? I don't know. They usually don't, but I'm mad high. Tell them. Tell them a very personal, the secret behind an orchid. That's crazy though. Give somebody an orchid and they'll tell you about their life. Like, I promise, if I gave your mom an orchid, she would probably take care of it and let it, it would last a month or two. That's it. But that's how you know. But if you would give it to somebody where they moved into Inglewood, like, recent Inglewood, after, like, 2010, when they got the LAX renovations and then all the police were swamped in, it became safe. Basically, Westside Inglewood is just the suburbs now. Yo, you see that? That's when you said you're from England. I'm like, yo, so he sees gentrification. Like, yo, son, no. It changed so fast. Once once LAX got renovated and they pushed in, like, all these import-export warehouses and all that shit, it just, it got so safe. Which is, you know, thank goodness, but my neighborhood that I grew up in isn't there anymore. It's warehouses now. Um, we got out, but... Oh boy, said we sold, got paid, and got on. <laughs> That's a fuck. Hollywood is on the brink of a shutdown for the first time since 1960, with some of its biggest actors likely to join a strike by scriptwriters. The Screen Actors Guild says deals have not been reached with studios and streaming services. They're demanding more royalties and safeguards around the use of artificial intelligence to preserve jobs. Regina <laughs> Yashaves, an executive producer and comedian, she's been on strike as a writer for two months, and since last night she's striking as an actor too. Gina's in Los Angeles and with us live. A warm welcome to you. Uh, so you've talked in the past about your long battle for recognition in the UK and then the US. You're now, of course, successful, a well-known actor and writer. So why are you striking? Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Jamal. Uh, I'm from Virginia. I've been acting for about five years now. I've uh, done background for about two and a half years. Started right before COVID. Uh, got on my vouchers on one show, uh, Never Have I Ever. Uh, that was a great experience working with that cast and crew. Um, this is before COVID, though, so this is when you could serve yourself on set. You could walk. There was no really crafty person. You could just do whatever you really wanted uh, when it comes to food and boundaries and of that nature. Then COVID came. 
it came more restrictions more and more uh, harder for you to move around the set um, and being sad you get uh, how can I say it you get um, different treatment uh, for lack of a better word uh, you get to eat first before the non-union people uh, you get paid more as well and things of that nature was always good that's why everybody wants to be sad who doesn't want to be sad uh, so now moving into the strike um, 20 when did it start was it May 5th to uh, 2023 something like that uh, so May 5th, 2023 came around. The strike came, all the shows stopped. Lucky for me, I was uh, working on the show Gronish. Shout out to Gronish. Um, and that kept going until like about May 22nd. So during the strike, there was only two shows running. It was Gronish and Good Trouble. The only reason why those shows were running was because the scripts were already finished. And the, since the strike happened, the directors left. I mean, not the directors, the, uh, the writers left. So there was no writers on set. We were just finishing the scripts that were already written in place and they already had directors. So that's why we were able to go. Once the strike continued and the, the DGA went on strike, we lost directors. And once you lose directors, you can't shoot anything. So everything stopped. Everything came to a halt. And from that moment, I mean, nobody, a lot of people haven't been working. I mean, if you're a real, uh, real actor and you're really out here, you're on set every day, whether you're standing in, whether you're background, uh, there's plenty of jobs on set. What are you not those things? And now you have no job, you're really struggling. I know a lot of people are trying to find jobs, but everybody's looking for a job now, so there are no jobs. Uh, there's people that are becoming uh, strike captains that are out there striking uh, every day and running the facilitation of striking and make sure everybody's good. Um, yeah, what should I think? What else? What's next? What's next? I'm running out of work. Give me a question real quick. Do you think the strike will end, Jamal? <laughs> uh, man, I'll keep it honest with you. So I have an inside scoop on that. Uh, so a writer told me. Uh, he writes on a couple Hulu shows that the strike won't end until next year, in uh, February. So the reason why I say that is because we have uh, a November hiatus for Thanksgiving. We have a December hiatus, which is two to three weeks in December, and then we normally don't start back till January seventh. So from Thanksgiving all the way to January seventh, you already thinking you're not working. So for this strike to happen four months in advance before the hiatus is just ridiculous. Cause we're running out of money already. Uh, so I don't believe that any shows will come back during those times. I think that everybody will wait until February. I think we're not going to come to a decision until February because legally, 90 days is the waiting period after a contract ends. So after the contract ended on May 5th, they have to wait 90 days before they can come to a decision anyway. So whether or not they're sitting down talking, there's no contract going to be signed until 90 we're days. We're trying to safeguard it. The studios don't seem to uh, be interested in safeguarding the future of the people that create the stuff that makes them the billions of dollars. You know, we're not against technology. We're against using our intellectual property to feed into the sausage machine that is AI. You know, to train the uh, AI, you're going to have to feed information into it. And what they're doing is they, for, for writers specifically, they're going to want to feed our scripts, our intellectual property into AI and whatever it, rubbish it, 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 it spouts out of the other and then they'll get maybe one writer to make it look like a human actually wrote it and that's what they're trying to do so that you know which we, all we want is safeguards of getting them stealing our work and not paying us for using our work to train this robot in order to put us work and for actors now they can put the face of anybody on anybody's body to make any kind of movie. So basically what's going to happen is that there'll be less and less work for actors and people's images can be used without their consent. And so that's not till what, May, 90 days after that, was that like October? And then it's October or November, and then it goes right into the hiatus that I was talking about. So nothing's going to be signed, man. People are really holding out. The writers are holding out until these companies, uh, these companies' pipelines are dried out. That's literally what they're doing. And the big corporations are thinking that uh, they can run these shows and bring old shows and think that, th that they can uh, run up all the shows and make the writers lose their houses, lose their cars before they just sit down and just sign some bullshit contract. And I don't think it's going to happen. I think that everybody's standing in solidarity, which is the SAC Astra, the DGA, IOTC, and all the other organizations and locals, everybody's standing together with the writers. And I think this strike is going to go on for at least until February. And if it goes longer than February, then so be it. We don't want AI taking over the industry. AI should not. AI shouldn't even be a thought in acting. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. How can an uh, AI writer, writer of a script, get a freaking Oscar? How can an AI actor get an Oscar? An Oscar is the highest accolade. I don't care about the the short film accolades. No one cares about that. We care about the Oscars.
And you can't just give that up to AI. That, that's ridiculous. And I, and I, I don't, and I feel that the consumers should be offended that they feel these corporations can just throw a, a, a fake person in your face and say that this is acting. And, and that's really a slap in the face to all the people that are trying to make it and trying to get to that A-list, B-list, C-list uh, level of acting. Uh, because people are spending lots of money on classes, um, LA casting, actors access, headshots and all this shit. And you think that we're just gonna let some AI, some computerization fucking figure to do that? It's ridiculous. But yeah, that's my time. Uh, my name is Jamal. Look out for me on YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, Tubi. Man, that's a lot. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully the strike comes to an end soon. And if it was up to me, if it was up to me, I'll just give the writers what they wanted. Uh, our directors don't need to up on pay. The directors will get a really good amount. Uh, I'll definitely up background pay. I think background deserves a little more. And, and I will cut a lot of the restrictions out. But we'll talk about that another time. There are, of course, huge implications also for who potentially, as you say, owns the rights to people's images, to their voices. But what specifically, in terms of law, are you looking for in terms of safeguards? Dell and the strike. Okay, so I have a lot of mixed feelings about the strike. And I have mixed feelings because I feel like the union, SAG-AFTRA, they don't really support the actors. They're they're doing what's in their best interest and they've always done that. And I feel like they've sold out the little guys, me, and other actors who aren't in the 1%, right? Um, and I say that because, you know, for example, like the healthcare. Healthcare, you have to make $26,000 a year in order to qualify for healthcare. Very few actors qualify for healthcare, okay? 1%. You know, maybe, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to be very generous. I'm going to say, and I haven't done my research on this part, but maybe I'm going to be generous. 5% of actors working in this industry, paying their dues on a regular basis, qualify for health care on a regular basis yearly. 5%. Okay, that means 95% of us pay on a regular basis their dues quarterly. Um, Wait, it's twice a year, so you, you, you figure what that is, right? They pay their dues twice a year, biannually, and they do not qualify for health care. They do not qualify for most of the benefits that SAG-AFTRA gives to the one percenters. So, yeah, I have my mixed feelings. I do feel that this strike is pivotal. Pivotal in, in a couple of ways. One, it's pivotal in that we pray and we hope that this time the union gets it right. Right, they sold us out in the commercials, they sold us out in streaming, so hopefully this time they will not sell us out with AI and they will do better and make better on streaming for us, okay? So, that's what I'm hoping. This is a pivotal, pivotal time for our industry. Two things, this is the, first, this is the second time in 63 years that the Writers Guild and SAG-AFTRA, so the writers and the actors, have actually striked together. The last time this happened was in the 60s, 63 years ago. So this is a pivotal strike. The actors and the writers striking together. So we pray that this time they will get it right for the actors and for the writers. This strike to me is about creative control. Okay. Are they going to allow AI, nothing wrong with AI, I embrace AI, we need AI, no, I don't know, okay, let me not say we need AI, but AI has its place, right, and we can work with AI to create something ingenious, right, however, 
if they're trying to use AI to replace us, that's a problem. But if they're using AI to enhance the work that we do as actors and as writers, primarily as writers, then I think that that's a good thing. However, because of the nature of the industry and the nature of the studios, right? They're all about money. The bottom line for them is always profit. It's always been about profit. So with that in mind, it's going to be very difficult to see how they're going to um, negotiate this particular uh, moment that we're in, right? Um, because quite frankly, they can use AI to write a script. They don't need a writer. They can bring somebody in to polish the script, you know, create something that they want, make it more of what they want. And so they're going to be paying less people to do that. They pay less people. They make more money on the backside when they sell it or distribute it or, you know, all of that stuff. But we do know that AI is also going to be programmed by, is programmed by humans, right? So, and at this particular point, AI has not developed to the point where they can create the emotional life, um, the compassion, the empathy in things that we as actors and writers bring to the whole um, well, we process. That, it, it, I don't want anybody using my image without my knowledge, without being uh, at least uh, remunerating me for that. There should be stuff put in place to stop that from happening. At the end of the day, you, you can't buy a human. Slavery is over. So you can't buy people and use their images without their consent. And that is what we're trying to fight against. And that we need stuff put in place to make sure that doesn't happen. For a formulaic story of what AI generates, because AI is only going to be able to give you formula. They're not going to be able to give you the nuances that a human can give you. Right? The nuances of a personal experience. Something that, because most writers write from experience. Even when they write from a prompt that was given to them by a storyline or something, they still interject some kind of personal experience in that. AI doesn't have that. Are we going to sacrifice that and give our audiences? generic formula how entertaining is that going to be how authentic is that going to be i don't know i think that's something we're going to have to see right but personally i don't think they can do it and then i just saw something recently with Nicki minaj and tim is it tim or tom Tom, Tom Howard, Howard, right? Yeah. Where they jet AI generated the images of Nicki Minaj and Tom Holland. Dude, that was some robots talking. There was no like emotional life that was really living there. So if you think you're gonna, they're gonna be able, if the, okay, let me not say you, because you're the audience, right? But if they think, the studios, the money makers, the people that want to control everything, think that they're going to use, take somebody's image and generate a character and a, 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 of that person and that, that character um, robotically generated is going to be able to give you the nuances of a human re, um, relationship, a, new, uh, a human emotion. It's not going to happen. I don't care how many humans program that. It's not going to happen. AI will never be... AI may, may be able to cry on cue, but they're not going to be able to cry when they really need it. 
when it's really absolutely necessary because of the emotional life that that character is living in that moment. You won't be able to do it. So trust me and believe me when I tell you that AI will never be able to replace a writer and will never be able to replace an actor. So, things to think again about that AI thing. Hey, how you doing? This is Doja Eyes at Doja Eyes underscore TV, where you're still the star. I'm just out here hanging out uh, with our striking uh, comrades. Uh, you probably see me on a lot of different shows, uh, but right now it's not about those shows. It's about solidarity. It's about uh, trying to get uh, more dollars for our faces because they're saying that by me being a background actor, they're scanning my face. And I only got $100 for that show, but they're scanning it all over the world. They're scanning it in other uh, entities. Okay, so right now, I'm going to tell you, I started on Soul Train. I got a chicken there, a two-piece with a butter condiment and a syrup condiment. American Bandstand, 1984. I got a bucket of chicken. Dick Clark was hooking us up. Then I went to the Gun Show. I got Domino's Pizza. Regina King was the judge. Uh, Casey Kasem and his wife was a judge, but I'm gonna tell you when I did Players Club that we when we be clubbing, oh, Q gave me a filet mignon steak, baby. I'm trying to tell you, it just gets better with time, and it go. Then I end up getting a tap Hartley from Master P at Hollywood Homicide with Harrison Ford. So people want to know if I'm sad? No, I am entertainment. I am the entertainers, entertainers. And you heard it all first here. And I'm proud, central casting, professional. Back around that. Try to do something that you can be consistently good at, something that's within your tool, within your repertoire that you're already working on a consistent basis. You going and you paying for acting classes, you you doing this, that, and the third, and you pushing blood, sweat, and tears into something that you definitely been working your whole life for, if not like five to ten years for. And right now you're in a predicament that all that hard work that you've been working for isn't being credited towards. You're not getting paid the amounts you feel like you should be getting paid for. So all I can say is like, what next? Then what? You feel me? They did that shit. Now what? You wake up the next day, what you gonna do? You feel me? But as for my people that are all, that are in the industry and that do care about this very deeply, uh, I do stand with them as well. You know. Fight for your voice, you know, make sure your voice is definitely being heard. I definitely respect that and I highly stand behind that as well. But I also do feel like you should definitely try to find something that you can do besides standing out in the sun waiting for someone to give you what you want rather than 
okay, they took a door from me, so how can I go on ahead and push forward and find another door? How can I go on ahead and take what it is that I know and what I love and find another route to go on ahead and make success that I actually want to happen for myself? Because it has to do with money at the end of the day for a lot of people that are out there, the families that they got to feed, the people that they got to take care for. So what you going to do when someone don't give you the option that you want or you're looking for? What you going to do next? You going to sit there and just wait for the plan B or you going to wake up and do something consistently every day to get you back to where it is that you want to stand on? Those are really my thoughts at the end of the day, but you I stand with y'all. Power to the people at all times. Speak up. Your voices are always going to be heard at the end of the day, whether it's the ones that you want to hear or not. Just know that you're being noticed, you loved, you cared for, and the days are going to get brighter. I promise that. It's APG. It's Los Medias. I'm out. You know what we're going to do? We're getting back to you. We rolling. All right, look. A lot of people know me. If you don't know me, oh well. I wear this ski mask when it's a lot of money on the table. I don't take it off for nobody. So uh, you might be asking why he wearing a ski mask in an interview. That's why I be in I be in that mode. But um, I'm here today to talk about pretty much like what's going on in the world as far as like the strike. To me, I think that it affects more than just the people that we see that's in front of the camera. We see the people that are acting. We see the people that are doing other shit, but we don't think about the people that have the clue. We don't think about, you know what I'm saying, the security, all that type. Everybody loses their job, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's fucked up, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I'm a hustler. I feel like you're supposed to have a backup plan, you know? Things gonna get hard. Um, I really don't like to say bad things about what anyone is doing, but I just couldn't see myself like out there like doing the strike. It's just not me. I'd rather be coming up with other ways to get money. You know what I'm saying? They're just kind of making me feel like you're emotion. You know what I'm saying? And that's the only outlet of income you want right now. It's a thousand ways to get money. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not trying to defect. Or, or go away from the fact that people are losing their jobs, you know what I'm saying? Like, but if you think about it, it's people losing their jobs all over the fucking world. So, at the end of the day, we put this out here to make sure people know that it's other reasons for you to feel the way you feel, you know what I mean? But... You still gotta hustle, you still gotta get up, you know what I mean? I got children, so it's like, before I have to wait on a certain date for everybody to be getting back in the studio and production and get back going, I rather be thinking about other ways to get money. Now, some people might feel the exact same way I feel. A lot of people might feel like I'm being negative, but that's just me, you know? Uh, I'm not from out here in California at all. I moved out here. I've been for like three years now. Yeah, everything's been good. So it's like when I see my friends and I see, you know what I mean, people that I know that are being affected by this, it does bother me. But at the end of the day, they're hustlers too. And they know like, boom, we got children. We got this, that, and the third. Or we going to get our own shit together. We going to make our own move. It might not be the fucking best movie, but they're just showing us that we got it in us. We don't have to have like, a big production company. We don't have to have a thousand people behind us. And you don't either. If this is what you want to do and this is what you love to do and this isn't any other career out here for you to do right now, I feel like create it yourself. Everything you want to do at Sony, everything you want to do at Paramount, everything you want to do at Netflix, people sell cameras every fucking day. People buy equipment. People go to school for this. So it's like at the end of the day, if Las Vegas is booming next year and Hollywood isn't, what you gonna do? You know what I mean? Like, it's been past 90 days at this point. So, I feel like we can talk about it and discuss it, but, you know, like, as a team, you should also have a backup. Me and my team, we got a backup. 
we're gonna get money regardless because at the end of the day that's what it's about it's about feeding your family it's about taking care of your family and it's about having fun and you can't have goddamn fun if you out there having a strike every day so you got to get back to the fun you got to make happiness you got to make it make sense it's airplane game we out has literally changed the way we consume content and is fueling the current Hollywood strike. Well, Sean, I remember this comes after talks fell apart last week. So it's certainly a positive story and what's been a very long journey so far, the writer's strike surpassing that critical 100-day mark. Union leaders told striking Hollywood writers that they plan to meet with representatives for studios to discuss restarting negotiations. The Writers Guild of America sent an email to members saying that they the head of the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers requested a meeting on Friday. It's unknown whether a similar overture was made to union leaders for Hollywood actors who have been on strike I since heard somebody, I heard And remember, News 2 brings you breaking news around the clock at WKRN.com. If it goes longer than February, then so be it. We don't want AI taking over the industry. AI shouldn't AI shouldn't even be a thought. Uh, for right now, I'm contemplating going back into my old field because there's no work. It sucks, especially when you're just new to the city, man. Like why? Like why gotta happen when I just got here? Get you up, gotta go to the strike, man. Come on. Right. Yes. Just like this. Come on, come on. You got proud of boots on, man. Don't make no damn sense. Boots on, man. We're striking against you. The movie is. It's going to. It's going to push a lot of young, coming, up and coming actors out of the industry. And for writing, the same thing. If 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 it's an industry that nobody can afford to be in anymore, the the art of writing is good.